بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Tonight we're going to uh, shed light on the last. Uh, essentially, it's going to be the last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah, but we have to touch upon the first verse, uh, the the third to last, uh, because it's part of the narration. Uh, in the book of an Imam Muslim, Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu narrates that when Allah Azza wa Jal revealed لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَإِن تُبْدُوا مَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ أَوْ تُخْفُوهُ يُحَاسِبِكُمْ بِهِ اللَّهِ فَيَغْفِرُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيُعَذِّبُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَاللَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ To Allah belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth. Whether you show what is within yourselves or you conceal it, Allah will bring you to account for it. He will forgive whom He wills and punish whom He wills. And Allah is over all things competent. When this was revealed, Abu Huraira said the companions felt overburdened, felt this to be extremely heavy. You know when you're held to account about something that's within your self that you're concealing, that a thought that comes to mind, that's extremely difficult to control because a lot of these thoughts are actually beyond your control. So when this was revealed, he said, they came, they came to the Prophet ﷺ and knelt down before him and said, O Messenger of Allah, we were obliged to perform acts of obedience which we could bear. Salah, Siyam, Hajj, Jihad, all of that we can bear. But this verse is something we cannot bear. So the Prophet ﷺ said, Do you want to say, like the people of the two books before you, Sami'na wa asayna, we hear and we disobey? Rather say, Sami'na wa ata'na, gufranaka rabbana wa ilayka al -masir. Rather say, we hear and we obey. We seek your forgiveness, O our Lord. And to you is the final destination. So they said, Sami'na wa ata'na ghufranaka rabbana wa ilayka al -masir. Notice the narration did not say, so they left and then they later, they said immediately on the spot and this is how their reaction was to the commands. You know, at times verses come and they want to understand the meaning. The depth, the essence of the verse, it is not to object about it, but it is to know the details and the boundaries they need to move within. So they came and said, this is too heavy. What is it? He said, don't say that. Say, سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا We hear and we obey. And immediately they said. So Abu Huraira goes on to say, so when people started reciting it, and it was... Uh, smoothly flowing on their tongues meaning they had no problems with it now Allah immediately revealed the messenger believed in what was revealed to him from his Lord and the believers all of them believed بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَرُسُلِهِ In Allah, His angels, His books, and His messengers. لَا نُفَرِّقُ بَيْنَ أَحَدٍ مِّن رُسُلِهِ We do not distinguish between any of His messengers. وَقَالُوا سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا غُفْرَانَكَ رَبَّنَا وَإِلَيْكَ الْمَصِيرِ And they said, Sami'na wa ata'na. We hear and we obey. We seek your forgiveness, our Lord. And to you is the final destination. When they said that, Abu, Abu Huraira said, when they said that and acted like this, Allah Azza wa Jal abrogated the first verse that was revealed. Lillahi ma fi samawati. That was overburdening the companions. That was heavy on their hearts. 
Allah abrogated it with the following one, which is the very last verse in Surah Al-Baqarah. لَا يُكَلِّفُ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِلَّا وُسْعَهَا Allah Azza wa Jal does not charge a soul except with that which is within its capacity. لَهَا مَا كَسَبَتْ وَعَلَيْهَا مَا اكْتَسَبَتْ It will receive the uh, or have the consequence of the good that it uh, performs and the evil consequence of the evil that it earned. ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا أو oh, our Lord do not impose it, a blame upon us for anything that we do forgetfully or by mistake. If we forget and do something wrong or fail to do something that's mandatory or we're ignorant, we do it mistakenly. Allah said, Yes, na'am. رَبَّنَا وَلَا تَحْمِلْ عَلَيْنَا إِصْرًا كَمَا حَمَلْتَهُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِنَا O Allah, O our Lord, do not uh, put upon us or lay upon us a burden like that which you laid upon the people before us. Allah says, said, na'am. Yes, رَبَّنَا وَلَا تُحَمِّلْنَا مَا لَا طَاقَةَ لَنَا بِهِ O our Lord, burden us not with that which we have no ability to bear, Allah said, Naam, yes. Wa'fu anna, waghfir lana, warhamna, anta mawlana, fansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin, and pardon us, forgive us, and be merciful towards us. You are our protector, so give us victory over the disbelieving people. Allah said, said yes, meaning, I have done, I have pardoned, forgiven, showered you with my mercy, and I shall make you victorious over the disbelieving people. Now let's get into the uh, details of these last two verses. Uh, this story is, is really touching. Uh, the story, of, because it reflects or actually it, it explains why the companions deserved to be radiallahu anhu. Why did they deserve the pleasure of Allah? Why was Allah pleased with them? Because they were a type of people whom whenever they're commanded, they immediately adhered. They submitted. They were true slaves of Allah. Servitude is something that became part of their nature to Allah Azza wa Jal. They're, they're dealing with Allah Azza wa and His Messenger وسلم, and religious text that they received. Radiallahu anhum ajma'een. We ask Allah to join us with them in Jannah. Allahumma ameen. Amana rasulu bima unzila ilayhim al rabbi. Allah Azza wa Jal testifies here to the Prophet, to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he has believed in what was revealed to him by his Lord, meaning it was incumbent, incumbent upon him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to believe. Why? Because he is the most knowledgeable of Allah. And the more you know Allah Azza wa Jal, the better slave you are to Allah Azza wa Jal. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, and this is reported by Imam Muslim, I am the most fearful of Allah amongst you and the one who knows knowledge. Who knows best how to stay away from his wrath and punishment. So, knowledge enables you to stay away from prohibitions and it also enables you to do and fulfill the obligations and therefore earn and be deserving of the pleasure of Allah the Almighty. Allah Azza wa Jal says, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاء Those who fear Allah the most amongst His slaves are the people with knowledge, the scholars. Why? Because they know. When you remember when we were talking about the names and attributes of Allah, or rather that was in, one, in, the, in the series of khutbahs. Uh, in the inter introduction, we said the, the words of Ibn al Qayyim that the more you know Allah, the more you love Allah, the more willingly you worship Allah, the more you fear Allah the more you hope 
in the mercy of Allah. And when someone has all of this collectively like a messenger, and those who inherited messengers, like scholars namely, then they are going to be the closest to fulfilling this. وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ And the believers. Again, this is a testimony from Allah Azza wa Allah testifies that the companions did believe and it is something that applies to all believers after them who fulfill what they fulfilled. Notice Allah Azza wa Jal used two of his names. Rabb and Allah. آمَنَ الرَّسُولُ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ كُلٌّ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ So Allah used these two distinct names that no one can be named with. The first one is Ar-Rabb which entails that you submit and confess that He is the Creator, the Sustainer, the Maintainer, the giver, the taker, the causer of death and giver of life. And Allah entails that he is alone worthy of being worshipped, subhanahu wa ta'ala. كُلٌّ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَرُسُولِهِ لَا نُفَرِّقُ بَيْنَ أَحَدٍ مِّنْ رُسُولِهِ Ibn Kathir said, the believers believe in Allah and that he is one and only, and he is the only one worthy of worship. And all the divine books Allah sent down on his messengers, and believe in all of his prophets and messengers, and make no distinction amongst them, because all of them carried and conveyed one unified message, which is calling people to worship Allah alone, calling people to tawheed, This was a unified message. Islam in its general sense means full submission and worship in only Allah Azza wa Jal. And this was the messenger, the message of all the messengers. مَا كَانَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ يَهُودِيًّا وَلَا نَصْرَانِيًّا وَلَكِنْ كَانَ حَنِيفًا مُسْلِمًا Ibrahim was neither a Jew nor a Christian. Rather, he was pure on nature, Muslim. Submitting to Allah Azza wa Jal and Allah alone. So their message is the same. As a matter of fact, as Muslims, if we believe in Muhammad and refuse to believe in any other messenger, we go out of the fold of Islam because we are going against a clear text from the Quran that says, You must believe. So if someone hates the Jews and says, therefore I'm not going to believe in Musa. What has Musa got to do with your feelings towards the Jews? Musa is a messenger. He's a brother of Muhammad sallallahu We love them all and we believe in them all. But since Muhammad sallallahu said, and this is reported by Al-Imam Muslim, I am the master of, the, of all of the children of Adam on the day of judgment. And I'm not boasting about it. So we believe that they're all messengers, they're all brothers, but the best of them is Muhammad because of this religious text that we have. وَقَالُوا سَمِعْنَا Now, two people can hear something, and one would believe it, and the other would reject it. So the hearing here is not just your normal sense of hearing that a Muslim and non-Muslim can know. It is the hearing that implies acceptance to what you hear from the message. وَأَطَعْنَا We obey. Now this obedience implies full adherence to what you heard in all its complete sense. غُفْرَانَكَ رَبَّنَا we seek your forgiveness, O our Lord. The believers, radiallahu anhum, since this was addressing them in the beginning, but it's addressing everybody after them, 
they knew that due to their human nature, they will not be able to fulfill all the implications of belief and will not be able to perfectly adhere and fulfill human nature. They will fall short. And that's perfectly okay because we're humans. The Prophet ﷺ said, كُلُّ بْنُ آدَمَ خطاء. All the children of Adam are faulty. But the difference between people, وَخَيْرُ الْخَطَّائِنَ التَّوَابُ The best of all these who make mistakes, who sin, who err, are those who frequently repent. No one can claim that anyone other than messengers and prophets were infallible. This is insane. This goes against human nature. All the companions, but of course two differences. The severity of the sin or the mistake is one. And how fast they repented to Allah and turned to Him. So they knew this nature and they knew that nothing can wipe this out whenever they fall short except if Allah forgives them so they sought and asked forgiveness of Allah وَإِلَيْكَ الْمَصِيرِ And to you is the final destination. This is a clear confirmation about the faith of the companions radiallahu anhum and that they believed contrary to the Quraysh and the Arabs at the time they believed in resurrection. One of the major issues Quraysh re re refused was that they will be resurrected after death and will be held to account. They, they simply refused this principle and fought against the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Allah will not charge a soul except that which is within its capacity. And this is out of the kindness of Allah That He dealt with us based on our human nature and ability and capacity. And we must from here know, from this, that there is no action or saying that Allah Azza wa Jal instructed the believers to do or say except that it is within their capacity. It is impossible to be beyond their capacity because this will go against this verse. And this is as a general rule. I'll give an example. In certain cases, a person will not tolerate to stand up in prayer. Though without standing up, which is a pillar of salah, your salah is void. Right? But when you're ill, for example, you're traveling in a, in a, in a plane and the time of the prayer is about to expire and you cannot stand up. Now it's by law you cannot stand up to pray. So you sit down and your salah is okay. It's accepted. Why? It's beyond your capacity. You cannot stand up. But that's not the general rule. The general rule is that everybody can stand up when they're praying. So we know from this verse that Allah does not charge us, does not command us to do anything beyond capacity. So no one can claim or justify his shortcomings by saying, ah, it's beyond my capacity. Is there anything wrong with you? Is there a certain circumstance that you're going through that prevents you from adhering? No, then it's within your capacity and you must fulfill. Now, Ibn Abbas said, Allah Azza wa Jal, with this, Obrogated the the uh, first verse as said in the narration of Abu Huraira of Sahih Muslim. Uh, Ibn Abbas said, and this is reported by Imam Ahmad in, in his Musnad and classified as authentic by Al Arnaut. Uh, he said, Allah Azza wa Jal uh, overlooks 
what people have as thoughts to themselves and will only hold them to account for their actual deeds. Uh, there is another narration by Abu Huraira and it's in, the, in Bukhari and Muslim in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi says uh, Allah Azza wa Jal pardons my ummah my followers, my nation for, the, for thoughts that they think to themselves so long as they don't talk about it nor act upon it. So someone thought of something evil if you keep your mouth to your, or keep this to yourself, right? And don't start talking to someone. Oh, you know what I thought of? I thought of this and that. Why do you have to say? Why do you have to disclose it and be sinful? Some people say it and they actually don't plan to act upon it. They just think it's cool to talk about what came to their mind, though it's a sin. So, it's written against them, and they haven't done it. But they spoke about it. Or if someone acts upon it without even telling anyone, he can be doing it in, uh, in secrecy, behind doors, no one knows about what came to his mind, but he actually put this thought into action. So he'll be held accountable. We must know that Allah Azza wa Jal made this religion facilitated and acting upon it facilitated, easy and simple. It is something within the scope of capacity and ability and capability of humans in general except the exceptional cases as we just mentioned. Allah Azza wa Jal says, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرَ Allah Azza wa Jal intends for you ease and He does not intend for you hardship. This, by the way, came in the verse that's talking about fasting Ramadan. The, the verse before that, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ O you who have believed, Siyam has been mandatory upon you just as it was ma mandatory upon the people before you. So people would, think, would, would uh, realize that they're not singled out as a, as a nation with this new obligation. It's something that was to make it easier, to make religion easy, facilitated. Even psychologically you feel it is something within reach and doable. لَهَا مَا كَسَبَتْ وَعَلَيْهَا مَا اكْتَسَبَتْ It will have the consequence of the good that it gained and the evil consequence, it will bear the evil consequence of the evil it committed. Uh, Ibn Taymiyyah says, Allah Azza wa Jal does not benefit, does not gain from the obedience of his slaves, nor is he harmed by their disobedience. So he did not command them to do something because he needed that, but rather out of mercy. And he did not command them to refrain some th from something for any other reason but for their protection and their, the best of their uh, interest. And Allah, he goes on to say, and Allah will not punish anyone with the deeds of anyone except himself. Because Allah says, وَأَلَّيْسَ لِلْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا مَا سَعَى وَلَا تَزِرُ وَازِرَةٌ وِزْرَ أُخْرَى And he listed few verses. No one will bear the consequence of the evil of someone else. And the person will face the consequence of that which he set forth, meaning in dunya. رَبَّنَا لَا تُؤَاخِذْنَا إِنْ نَسِينَا أَوْ أَخْطَأْنَا اللَّهُمَّ آمين. Oh Allah, do not impose blame upon us if we have forgotten or erred. 
Allah Azza wa Jal knew the nature of humans and that He's going to command and they will fall short. So He instructed them to seek, to, to call upon Allah Azza wa Jal to forgive them for what they do out of forgetfulness or being uh, mistaken in, in the sense here that they didn't know that this was uh, haram, for example, and they committed. The Prophet وسلم, and this clarifies the issue, uh, and this is reported by Imam Ahmed and classified as uh, authentic by Albani. Abdullah ibn, <coughs> Abdullah ibn Abbas said, the Prophet وسلم, said, Allah Azza wa Jal overlooks the what my followers or nation commits in the following situation something they commit by mistake or forgetfully or forcefully someone holds a gun to your head and say eat this pork or i'll shoot you your life takes precedence over you refraining from eating uh, or eating pork so you preserve and guard your life by committing the lesser of the two evils. And in this case, the, the two evils are either committing the sin of pork or losing your life. These are the two evils. So you're commanded to preserve your life and therefore you must. So this is some, something that you've done wrong, but you're forced to. Someone who uh, eats and drinks in Ramadan, forgetfully, he forgot that he's fasting. And this happens a lot. And there is a text from the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever eats and drinks in Ramadan, then let him continue because it is Allah who gave him food and drink. Let him continue his fast. So this is something wrong that you've done. It is haram to eat and drink in Ramadan during the day, but he's done it forgetfully and so on. ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا. Don't lay upon us a burden like that which you've laid upon the uh, people before us. Um, we need to be very thankful to Allah Azza wa Jal. If we only know the uh, the burdens that were upon the nations before us. And this only happened because they transgressed and disobeyed. Allah Azza wa Jal says, فَبِظُلْمٍ مِّنَ الَّذِينَ هَادُوا حَرَّمْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ طَيِّبَاتٍ أُحِلَّتْ لَهُمْ For wrongdoing on the part of the Jews, we made unlawful for them certain good foods which had been lawful to them. So the result of their wrongdoing, their disobedience to Allah Azza wa Jal, was that they lost some of the lawful things and burdens were placed upon them. Among the things, it used to be for them that if impurity touched part of their dress, their garment, they had to cut it. For us, all you have to do is make sure that you wash it enough to remove the, the uh, impurity and all traces of impurity and it goes back to its ritual pure state again. For them, it was more difficult. If impurity touched it, it had to be cut off. So Allah Azza wa Jal is instructing us, directing us to ask Him to make things easy and not to overburden us with things like he burdened the nations before them. رَبَّنَا وَلَا تُحَمِّلْنَا مَا لَا طَاقَةَ لَنَا بِهِ Don't burden us with that which we have no ability to bear. This can be, the best example for this is the qada and the qadr, the hardships that befalls people, difficulties, adversities, and 
sometimes it can be overwhelming, right? We are given instructions how to deal with that and how to counter that. But the believer is also instructed to ask Allah Azza wa Jal not to uh, burden him with that which he is not capable of. But parallel to that, if a calamity was to befall any of us, then we have something else that goes along with this uh, verse, which is the prophetic uh, sunnah instructing us how to deal with calamities, persevering, being patient, accepting contentment. If you remember, we spoke about contentment in, in difficulties, thanking Allah Azza wa Jal. When, when something happens that's at face value looks evil, if you look at the depth of that, the best thing that you can think of when anything happens is that you are not tested with your faith. If nothing but this, it's enough to thank Allah. If nothing else but that Allah tested you in your health, in your wealth, in your family, in your business, in your job, in anything else from this worldly life, None of that matters so long as you are still believing in Allah. Some people lose that. A story was told to me by one of the brothers about a gentleman whose wife gave birth to a child, to a baby boy. He has girls. He has daughters. And then he died. A second baby boy died at birth. The third baby boy died. A fourth baby boy died. A fifth baby boy died. At that fifth time, he lost it. He carried the baby out of the hospital and raised it up to the skies and raised his head and he spoke to Allah, A'udhu Billah. He said, you have no one else to test except me. You have no other business with none else except me. A'udhu Billah. So, if Allah maintains your faith for you, that's enough favor and blessing and mercy, regardless of how severe the hardship is that you're going through. وَعْفُ عَنَّا وَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَرْحَمْنَا أَنْتَ مَوْلَانَا فَانْصُرْنَا عَلَى الْقَوْمِ الْكَافِرِينَ And pardon us and forgive us and have mercy on us. You are our protector. So give us victory over the disbelieving people. وَعْفُ عَنَّا Pardon, forgive, mercy and victory. These four the scholar said, collectively compile all sources of bliss and success in this life and the hereafter. <laughs> Pardon us. When Allah pardons, it is as if the sin wasn't committed. It's wiped. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by Imam Ahmad, classified as authentic by Al-Albani. He said, Sallallaha al-Afwa wal afiyah Ask Allah for pardon and well-being. Waghfir lana. Allahumma afwa anna waghfir lana. In a uh, Qudusi narration, Allah Azza wa Jal says, Ya Ibn Adam, إنك ما دعوتني ورجوتني غفرت لك على ما كان منك ولا أبالي. O son of Adam, so long as you call upon me and have hope in me, I shall forgive you regardless of what you do. الله أكبر. يا ابن آدم لو بلغت Oh, son of Adam, if your sins reach 
as high as the heavens. Then you ask forgiveness of me. I will forgive you. يا ابن آدم لو أنك أتيتني بقراب الأرض خطايا O son of Adam, if you come to me having the earth's fill of sins ثم لقيتني لا تشرك بي شيئا but you come to me not associating anything with me meaning a believer لأتيتك بقرابها مغفرة I will give you in return equal to all of that in forgiveness. You see this vast mercy of Allah and forgiveness. So why do we postpone seeking repentance? Why do we postpone turning to Allah Azza wa Jal? Warhamna. Have mercy on us. Some scholars said this means Protect us from falling into further sin in the future. So pardon and forgive what has passed. And protect us from sinning in the future. These three things are beautiful. Because they're assurance to salvation. And success in the hereafter. Fansurna ala al qawmi al kafirin. So give us victory against the disbelieving people, those who denied your religion, belied your messenger, and refused your message. See, at the end, when Allah Azza wa saw how uh, the companions humbled themselves and submitted to the text. His response was immediate. فعلت. نعم. فعلت. Yes. I did. I pardoned and forgave. And uh, will shower you with my mercy and grant you victory. Brothers, there was, there was a time where the Muslims controlled the, the, the world. We reached far east, far west, north and south, everywhere. That wasn't because we had nuclear weapons no one had, or we had airplanes or tanks which no one possessed or we outnumbered the, the rest of the world with our Muslim soldiers. This was not how they did it. They did it with faith. And this was the instruction Umar used to give to the army. Fear Allah, for you will not defeat this people by outnumbering them or with your weapons, but with your faith. So if you sin and be equal to them, they will defeat you by virtue of their number and weapons. So they did it because of faith. When you hear the battles, the conquests that the believers had over the centuries, and I'm not just talking about the companions, You stand astonished at these, I don't know what, you, what, what to call them other than karamat. The numbers are way far off. The believers are way outnumbered. And yet, they defeat or defeated the, the disbelieving army and they had an utter loss, the, the disbelievers, to the extent that in some of the battles, not a single man remained alive from them. Not every army had Khalid ibn al-Walid. But every army who was granted victory had the faith of Khalid ibn al-Walid. 
And this ummah is not going to regain its victory, its honor and dignity, unless it goes back to that faith of Khalid ibn al-Walid. It's as simple as this.